Hello and welcome to this Warhammer 40k League video with me, Xenovids. In this video we're going to be looking at my opponent's 2000 point Necron army for our up and coming tournament. So let's take a look at his army. This is my opponent's 2000 point Necron list and as you can see we have some mystery bases. We'll go into more details about what they will be because they're currently on order at the moment. So uh, let's go ahead and start by looking at his HQ choices. This is my opponent's HQ choices for the Necrons. And the Necrons are quite uh, sneaky, they're deadly. They don't have to have just two choices. If they have a royal court, they can then break off Necron Lords and Cryptex into other units. So his Warlord is going to be an Overlord. And his Overlord is going to go into a Catacomb Command Barge. The Overlord is equipped with War Scythe, Septon Weave, giving him a 2 up armor save and a 3 up invulnerable. He's got a Res Orb, meaning he can come back to life on a 4 up. And a Phase Shifter as well. And being in a Catacomb Command Barge, he's essentially got a chariot and he can go along, do some, uh, do some damage, and uh, be quite deadly across the field. Moving across, in the Royal Court, there is a Harbinger of Destruction um, with an Eldritch Lance and Gaze of Flame. Harbinger of Eternity, which has the Aeon Stave, the Chrono... Excuse my pronunciation. Chronometron. Chronometron. Time Splinter Cloak. And got two Lords with Resurrection Orbs. Going to go into more details uh, about them with the units that they're going to be in. So going over to the elite section, we have two squads of death marks and an invisible Triarch Stalker. The death marks are going to have each of the cryptex in them. So, let's talk about the Harbinger of Destruction. Now, it's equipped with an Eldritch Lance and Gaze of Flame. The Eldritch Lance is 36 inch strength 8 AP2 assault 1. But because he is in the unit of death marks, if he chooses a target such as the Avatar of Cain, he will be using their rule that they roll on a two, they have a two up wound to wound. So it's quite devastating. Uh, the Harbinger of Eternity has an Aeon Stave, Chromonomotron, and Time Splinter. And what are they? The Ion Stave. Uh, basically, in close combat, he can make something have uh, a weapon skill, ballistic skill reduced by one and remove fleet from that model. The Chronomotron, that I can't pronounce, um, basically he gets a d6 reroll and if he's in a unit, uh, the unit can take that as well. And he has a free up invulnerable save, making him a little bit tougher. So, little bits of secret gadgets for these units that can deep strike and assassinate whatever they like. Moving on to the troops section, we have a nine-man squad of warriors in a ghost arc and a nine-man warrior squad in a ghost arc. Ghost arcs are devastating like most vehicles in the Necron army. They have quantum shielding, meaning that they have armor 13 all around until a penetrating hit is rolled then they're down to 11. They are open topped and they are a skimmer so they're able to have a jink save as well. The warriors themselves have a 4 up armor save which uh, changed from the previous edition of Necrons where it was a 3 up armor save but they did go down in points. Now the Ghost Ark's amazing features are as follows. They can repair uh, the, their repair barge. They can repair a fallen warrior and also have four hull points. So that's only 115 points. A skimmer with 13 armor all around that can repair warriors and four hull points. Quite devastating. In both of these warriors, there is a Necron Lord with a resurrection orb and a Necron Lord with a resurrection orb. Of the fast attack choices, we've got some invisible mystery models today. Um, they've got a cloak on uh, because we're waiting for them to arrive 
in the post. So we have two squads of three Canoptic Wraiths. Canoptic Wraiths are quite deadly, they're tough, they're able to move over uh, long distances really quickly and uh, great in close combat. His heavy choices, we have a Monolith and a Doomsday Arc. Doomsday Arc offering giant firepower from afar with a large blast weapon, high strength, low AP. Again coming with quantum shielding. The monolith doesn't come with quantum shielding, however it comes with front side and rear armour of 14. Both of these vehicles have four hull points, again just a little gripe that uh, they have four hull points, um, but they are devastating and with an eternity gate, particle whips, four gorse flux arcs, being able to deep strike, the monolith is still devastating in my opinion and from long range this bad boy is going to do a lot of damage. So that's his Necron list then, uh, please subscribe, like, comment and share and please leave a, in the comment section below um, some ways that I can take down some Necron vehicles with high hull points. Four, four hull points. Anyway, I'm going to go and think about some tactics. I've been Xenovids, and I will see you on the next video.